By now, I'm sure you've heard or seen the viral knitting craze for the emotional support chicken. Now, the emotional support chicken is a pattern by Annette Corsino. Yes, just checking I pronounced that right. Which is a pattern for a very cute, stuffy, plushy, whatever you want to call it, in the shape of a chicken. They're really endearing. It looks like a really sweet project to knit. I thought to myself as I saw these popping up, where have I seen this before? And as usual in my case, the answer is the 1940s. <laughs> so during World War II in Britain, and I'm sure in other parts of the world, children's toys were incredibly difficult to come by. They weren't rationed exactly, but as most consumer production was focused on the war effort, nobody was really making children's toys because the resources were diverted to more urgent things. So as a result, there was a lot of patterns published during that time for homemade toys. And this was true of not just knitting, of sewing, but also woodworking, paper crafts, all these sorts of things. And I have one in my collection, which is part of a series, but I don't know if you can see him there. It's a little duck. I know it's not quite a chicken, but he's called Douglas the Duck, but he is very similar in construction to the original emotional support chicken. And as my thing on this channel is generally to do 1940s versions of trends, I think I'm gonna make one. So for Douglas the Duck, I need a pair of number 12 needles, which is 2.75 millimeter. It says I need three quarters of an ounce of Serdar Majestic Wool four ply in white and three quarters of the same in yellow. A needle full of black wool for the eye, a small piece of yellow felt for the beak and a yard of ribbon to match the felt plus a quarter of a pound of kapok, kapok, for the stuffing. I looked it up, kapok or kapok, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, is a natural form of toy stuffing which was generally used before the invention of polyester toy stuffing. I'm hoping I have yarn in the stash for this so this can be a stash busting project. So let me get the yarn box down and we'll see what we're working with. I'm really glad I didn't film that <laughs> because that was not very elegant. But anyway, let's have a look stitched together hexi puffs. Now I do have this yellow four ply and this is Milamia Naturally Soft Sock, something like that. And I bought this for my three ply yarns experiment and I couldn't get it to eight stitches per inch tension, which you generally need for three ply. As I need four ply, I could use this, but it's sort of the wrong yellow. It's quite mustardy and it's not quite right for a duck. And I have about 250 grams of this. So it does feel like maybe I, there's a better use for this. What else have we got that's four ply? Well, I have all my shades of red and pink that I bought for the Victorian shawl that I haven't used, but I don't think that's gonna be quite right for a duck. Three quarters of an ounce, that's 21 grams. Hmm, I've got this vintage Shetland. That's quite duck-like. Don't think I've got enough of those oddments though. And I definitely don't have any white. Let's see what else I've got in the Shetland box. I think I've got a plan. I was trying to find more of my Shetland yarn, but this is all I've got left. I was really surprised, but that's it. I had a big box full and these are what I'm down to. I've decided I'm going to do a little bit of sort of striping. So I'm going for more realistic duck colors. This is actually two ply, so I'll have to double strand that, but I think it's gonna work. So the green will be the head and then there'll be a collar of white and then some stripes of brown to give it a nice duck-like effect. So in typical vintage knitting pattern style, this pattern, which could quite easily be made in the round using shaping, is knit flat in pieces and then seamed up. There's no diagrams. I haven't didn't know what the pattern pieces, if you like, looked like. So I have made myself on my iPad, not that you can see it, a little diagram of the shape of all the pieces. And that's meant I can plan where I want to do my color changes a bit better. It has you start with what they call the breast, but I think that's actually the bottom of the duck. You can kind of see he's got a slightly different color bit there. I think that's what they're talking about. And for that, I am going to use a combination of these two, my two ply alpaca and my vintage Shetland. But yes, I've got lots of little bits to make. I might need an emotional support chicken after this project.
So this is the first half about of the breast, as in the bottom of the duck, and I've just tied on two strands of my darker brown and I'm going to start doing some stripes before I change to a solid brown section for the other half. So I finished the breast of the duck, which looks like this sort of teardrop shape, is naturally rolling in half, so that's good. Where I had to double up the alpaca, which was too thin to knit on its own, it's now too thick compared to the Shetland yarn down here. But I don't mind that and it doesn't seem to have greatly thrown out the size. The tension is about the same, you know, just makes it quite difficult to knit because it is so dense. But we're working with what we've got, we're stash busting and these are the sort of things you have to put up with. So the next part is the sides and I'm a little bit confused about the shaping. I've got my schematic and I'm going to start with my dark brown and do some stripes and hopefully that will look like the feathers at the end of the tail which are all sort of multicolored. How many stitches do I need to cast on? 29. Let's get knitting. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 27, 28, 29. All right and now we knit two rows in this dark brown. Oh it's tight. You know it's bad when it takes you a minute and a half to knit 29 stitches. Increase. There we go. I just had a thought. Sorry to ruin the movie magic for you a little bit here, but as you know, I have developed a policy over my four years on YouTube. Never film the first attempt. So each of these remaining bits of the duck I have to knit two of. So I've already knitted a whole lot of them just to figure out how they're made so I don't do anything stupid and film it and get really frustrated. I've already made my first side with my stripes. Now if I follow the directions exactly as written I'll end up with two identical pieces won't I? Which means when I flip round one around to be the other side I'll have my colour changes on the wrong side. So I can either change colour on a different row, but then my stripes might not add up, or I'm going to have to reverse the shaping, aren't I? So when it says decrease at the beginning of the row and increase at the end of the row, I'm going to have to increase at the beginning of the row and decrease at the end of the row, I think. Let's try it and see. So of course now we are unpicking. Oop. So instead of slip slip knitting I need to increase at this end. Given I've just done a colour change it's a little bit tricky and so then I want the decrease at this end. Increase next to the edge stitch at the beginning of the row then knit end. So I knit to the end and then increase. So I've been carrying on with my side of the duck. So you have the point at the top here which makes the tail and then you sort of shape in the same direction and then I change to the main colour to do the, the straightish section. You do a series of decreases along the bottom edge and it quite thankfully tells you this is the bottom edge which made the whole flipping the shaping thing a lot easier for me to get my head round. So I've knit the main section and I'm now about to start increasing again for the front half of the duck. So I need to check my colour scheme for when I change colour but I don't think it's yet. Also. I'm nearly out of this Shetland wool. This was 25 grams and I supposedly needed three quarters of an ounce. So 25 grams is more than three quarters of an ounce. And I haven't even done the whole duck in this. <laughs> so thankfully I have more of this. I think I've got like five more skeins or something, but you know, we like stash busting. And yes, it said to increase at the start of the row for the next shaping. But of course, cause I'm reversing it, I will actually be doing it at the end of the row. Should have put my glasses on. What am I doing? I don't know. Shaping then at the beginning of the next row, increase one stitch, then work seven rows. So at the end of the row, I'm going to increase. Then work seven rows without shaping. Okay, I can do that. So I've made it. I've got my two opposite 
halves of the duck. I managed to figure out the shaping. So I think if I'm right, yeah, that's the tail. And then the head will go here on top of the brown bit. And then the breast, which I only need one of, goes sort of on the bottom like that. Yes, the stripes don't match up, but oh well. So next I'm onto the wings and I've got the same issue again. So this is my one I made first. So this one again has one edge with no shaping along the top and then the shaping on the bottom edge. And I need to do the shaping the other way for the other wing. Otherwise I'll get the wrong side of the fabric. So we start with, I'm gonna have enough, I hope so. I mean, I've got more yarn. I just don't wanna get it off the top of the wardrobe. So we start by casting on 16 stitches. There is something really fun about knitting really tiny little pieces. Or is that just me? <laughs> so I've knit my first seven rows of the wing and then at the end of the row and every following eighth row it says I need to increase. So that means at the beginning of the row I need to increase until there are 19 stitches keeping one edge straight. Okay, so, so <laughs> let me double check. At the end of the row, so I need to do it at the beginning. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so I've increased and knit straight for a little while, and now I'm having to decrease for the top. So I'm sort of about here before I do the colour change. This is how much yarn I've got. Will I need to crack into another ball? Let's see how we go. So I'm now at the point where I attach the dark brown and this is how much tan I've got left. I've got two rows to do, so I think we're gonna be okay. So let's change color. I've done the same number of rows for each wing, but for some reason, this one's a bit longer and I can only think it's to do with gauge, so. Oh well. Let's play yarn chicken, or should I say yarn duck? <laughs> that was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. Woohoo! Yeah! Finally, a game of yarn chicken that I win. <laughs> so the next couple of stripes I'm doing in this colour. If you look at a picture of a duck and you look at their wing pattern, they tend to have like a mixture of colours at the end of the wing. So that's what I'm trying to emulate. And we have two wings. <laughs> I really like them, they're really cute. They're a slightly strange shape and the decreases at the end, the way they wrote it was incredibly confusing. So I kind of did my own thing. Oh well, maybe my wings should have been a little bit longer at the end here, but they're good enough for me. So next we are done with those yarns too. Time to crack out my lovely green merino which I don't know whether I should have used it on a cuddly duck, but oh well. And the headpiece looks like this. And again, we've got some weird shaping. At one point you cast on, so to reverse it is gonna be another lot of concentrating. But to start with, I cast on 20 stitches in the cream. Okay, so for the head, it told me to cast on three stitches at the beginning of the row. And that's the row where I've done all my shaping so far. And when I did it, for the first version, I made that my colour change row and I cast on with the green at the beginning of the row. But of course you can't really cast on at the end of a row. You're essentially casting on at the beginning of the next row really, aren't you? So I think I've done this right. I've knit across with the new colour and then I'm gonna cast on and then work back across. And hopefully I'll end up with my colour change on the right side and the cast on stitches at the right side. <laughs> and those are the head bits done they're a weird shape. I'm really not sure how this is going to turn out. And also my gauge is different. I'm definitely using the right needles, but can you see one is significantly bigger than the other. And I can only think it's just because it's a different day, different time of day. I'm holding the needles less tightly. I don't know, but that's interesting to see that really, isn't it? So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. 
but um, I'll just sort of might have a slightly wonky head. I haven't decided whether I want to block these bits or not before I sew them up. Instinct's telling me I should, mostly because this brown yarn is kind of grubby. I think it uh, just needs a wash basically just to lift a little of the dirt. So I might as well block it, but I'm not doing that today because I'm tired now. I apologise if you can hear the absolute gale howling outside, <laughs> but uh, it's March, you never know what you're gonna get. So I've washed and dried all my pieces. So now I've got my darning needle, I've got my scissors, and it's time to start sewing this into a duck. Sew up the front and tail seams, and also the back of the duck. Okay, I think they want me to like leave a hole for the head, but sew up along the top. Let's give it a go. This is one of those things. I'm gonna really test my sewing up. I'm just over sewing. It's quite visible, but oh well. It's my emotional support duck and I can forgive myself for messy seams. <laughs> Today's not a good day and I had a nap and now I feel even worse. So that was dumb, wasn't it? But before I try to sleep, I've sewn up the back end, the top edge, I've left a hole for the neck, I've sewn down the front and then I also sewed this section up, but now I've come to add, uh, not that bit, this bit, I actually think I've sewn too far and I need to unpick that increase bit because if I sort of match this up, I can sort of get the increases to line up to there and then I've got a straight section and then the increases again, but then do you see how I've sewn that up and I think that bit should go to there. So I'm gonna unpick that last bit and add the breast. So here it is. The bottom is weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing duck yet, are you? I also kind of wish I'd put this section on the other way around so that the dark section was here but um, I'm not unpicking it now. <laughs> I'm hoping it will look better with the wings on. Oh yeah, I think that'll look a bit more like it. Anyway, the instructions say to stuff this, then sew up the head and then sew on the beak. I found a little bit of yellow felt. This is left over from making my owl costume and then sew the wings on. So I don't know what's the benefit of stuffing it before you sew the wings on. Maybe you get the positioning better. And also it doesn't say how to sew the wings on, but I presume that you sew all the way around them, otherwise they're gonna droop. Or like along the top and to here, so that just this bit flaps. Anyway, let's sew up the head first. I'm not getting up just yet. <laughs> so as I'm sewing up my duck, do you remember earlier I was like, my gauge is really different. Turns out I've done one extra set of decreases. So the reason my gauge is different is because <laughs> on one half, I have two fewer stitches. So that's not great. I think the easiest thing is to put the two big piece back on the needles and then just do another two decreases and then cast off again and then sew it up again. Okay, so I got a little bit carried away and forgot to film, but I have not only sewn on my beak, but stuffed the head and the body. I'll show you in a sec. But sewing on the felt beak with a darning needle and yarn was incredibly difficult. And this is not very securely in there. And I am thinking to myself, I would not be giving this to a small child because they are just gonna rip that off. 
but no small children will ever be coming anywhere near my duck so that shouldn't be a problem but yeah also i've somehow managed to give it <laughs> their duck looks quite dignified in its uh, beak mine's very much <laughs> <laughs> screaming <laughs> so I keep trying to adjust it and try and make it a little bit more like rick, rick. there we are maybe that's a bit better but yeah this is very cheap acrylic felt and I do kind of wish I'd either used a higher quality felt or knitted something maybe I'll go back and change it at some point I also have went to embroider the eyes and I realized I don't have any black yarn none at all so i do have these plastic safety eyes which i've used before for amigurumi but i don't know how i feel about them because they do make it look quite modern and not very vintagey but it is very vintagey to use what you have so i think i am going to go with these eventually do you want to see this plump duck <laughs> look at that body and like if i put that there how cute is that? Oh my god, and I haven't even got the wings on yet. I'm so thrilled with it. I've learnt from experience, really important to really, really solidly stuff the neck. So she's she's very soft here. It I know it's a it's I've done the feather pattern of a male mallard. So he's very soft here in the rear and very firm here. So I've only got a few more jobs to do and then it's done. So here he is, my emotional support duck. I'm so pleased with the way he came out. I don't think the bottom looks great. I wish I had done the stripes differently, but I love the wings. I didn't really know how to attach them. And then my mum actually had the suggestion to just attach them at the point here so that they're sort of a bit 3D. And I think that really adds to his character. Like I say, I do think the modern plastic safety eyes make it look much less vintage but all in all i'm really pleased with him <laughs> his neck is a bit wobbly despite me stuffing it really well and i do see on the pattern they say to add a ribbon and i realize now that's not just decorative that is to support his floppy head but i had so much fun making this it was a really sweet little project and i must admit having made this one I just couldn't help myself. I also made the emotional support chicken. I didn't have any yarn the right weight, so I just used what I had held double to get the roundabout correct gauge. So a lot of this is actually my Shetland odds and ends that I was really surprised I had so few of earlier in the video. But I had some yellow for the beak. I've gone for green stripes and I've used this yellow colour, which is the same as I used here, to sort of tie it all together. But I, yeah, I must admit, I get it. It's such a sweet little thing to hold. There's something about the shape of it that's just so cuddly. In terms of construction, it's very similar on the bottom in that it's got this sort of teardrop shape. The tail is knit separately, but then you pick up the stitches and knit and do short row shaping to create the body and the head, which I must admit I did prefer to knitting all the fiddly little pieces for this one. But what can I say? This was a really fun, silly little project. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. Uh, they might just sort of become channel mascots and live in the background of videos. Now, if you've been following along with my stash busting journey, which I must admit I have been neglecting the past couple of months, these two projects combined used about 200 grams of yarn. This one was about 65 grams and this one was about 135 grams. However, I'm not sure exactly of the figures because things have gotten really confusing, particularly with all these scraps of yarn. So what I need to do is have a little bit of a stash reset to see where we are. So that's going to be coming next week. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should watch this six hour compilation video of my stash busting journey so far so that you're up to date before then. Thanks for watching. See you next time.